Hey guys, this is Callum from English Shooting. Now, if you remember, I made a video recently about the Charity Commission report on the NRA, which raised a number of very concerning questions over the management and leadership of the NRA. And within that video, I touched upon the pending legal battle between Bisley Shooting Ground and the NRA. So to give a little bit of backstory to this, Bisley is made up of many different organisations and different owners. So whilst the NRA are in sort of ultimate control of Bisley camp, there are certain plots of land that are owned separately. Take the CPSA, for example. Bisley Shooting Ground, which is the pay and play clay ground over on Short Siberia, and they have their instruction on Crossoslow Heath, they rent that land from the NRA they then operate separately. They are a separate limited company uh, and the NRA are just simply their landlord. Now, 21 years ago, the NRA were actually in full control of Bisley Shooting Ground. But even through reading the 2001 Winter NRA Journal, really through mismanagement, they accrued a hell of a lot of debt. So Alexander Rupel, who is the current managing director of Bisley Shooting Ground, his father took over Bisley Shooting Ground from the NRA or the National Shooting Centre Limited. He ended up paying off hundreds of thousands of pounds worth of debt and then also had to invest hundreds of thousands of pounds into the business to actually get it up to a running clay ground. And they have successfully operated this business for, well, 21 years now. When putting that sort of money into a business, you want to make sure that you are going to see a return and that it's gonna be worthwhile. So the agreement that Alexander has stated took place was that it was going to be 40 years, that the Rupels were gonna have um, control of that area and their lease for 40 years. And now, although I haven't seen it, Alexander has stated that this is in black and white, this is in writing, this agreement exists. Unfortunately, because of the way that Bisley is ultimately owned, because the ground is MOD and the NRA are just in control of it, they're not able to give a 40-year lease. So it was agreed that it would be split into two 21-year leases and therefore making the 40 years. And that's what has come into dispute. And that's what Alexander Rupel is taking the NRA to court for. What this has led to is a fairly public spat going back and forth between the NRA and between Bisley Shooting Ground. Now, I will put all of the links in the, in the description below, so you can go and read the NRA statement from the CEO, and you can also go and read a Bisley Shooting Ground statement. What I'm sort of more interested in talking about is actually what happened at the AGM, and whether or not you want to read those statements from the NRA or Bisley Shooting Ground and, and draw a conclusion from, you can't deny facts, you can't deny black and white emails and letters. And this is what has certainly drawn the biggest concern from me. So there is a part within the AGM that uh, John Webster stands up in front and of all the members and categorically states that up until the end of June, which is when uh, BSG needed to vacate the premises under their interpretation of the lease, that BSG had given every intention that they were leaving. Those were his exact words. Busy Shooting Ground has given us every intention that they were leaving. This caused Alex Rupel to stand up and challenge and to actually state that he had sent various emails to John Webster. And I actually have one of those emails. We've been given permission to release it. So I, again, I will include it in the description below if you want to go and read it. And this letter is dated the 6th of July, 2018. It is quite clear reading this email that the intention of Bisley Shooting Ground was not to vacate, that they quite, obviously wanted to, to open up talks, to open up negotiations to secure the second 21 year lease. So for John Webster to stand up in front of the members and say completely the opposite, 
when he would have been fully aware of the efforts from Alexander Rupel in trying to open up negotiations for them to stay, well, it's completely misleading. And going back to the Charity Commission report, is certainly not being transparent. When challenged on this, Sean Webster quickly changes his tune. Oh yes, well, I did receive an email, but it was tied under uh, an NDA. And yes, you can read through this email and it states about an NDA. The email itself and the information within that email is not under an NDA. I wouldn't be able to share it otherwise. And then it goes even further when Andrew Mercer gets involved and states to the members yet again that, well, actually, the rent that is paid from BSG uh, is insignificant. And this is one of the, the arguments which is actually, well, here we have a family business that is generating rent for the NRA to no risk to the NRA from no investment of the NRA, but they get a substantial rent. And Andrew Mercer says, well, no, that's, that's rubbish. It's insignificant. It's only £16,000. Yeah, for Cottesloe Heath. But if Bisley Shooting Ground lose Cottesloe Heath, they're going to lose Short Siberia. And again, Alex Rupel questions them on this and challenges them and says, well, it's not £16,000, it's £70,000. That's £70,000 that it's risk-free for you. So you're going to have to make a serious amount of profit there to go over that £70,000 and also a significant investment to ever do that. So does it really work out for you? And this is where it just gets really, really petty. Andrew Mercer stands there and he says, it's not 70,000 pound, it's 66,666 pound. I still want to try and look at this from both sides. And I want to try and understand why the NRA are doing what they're doing. And actually, if you put a business hat on, it does make a lot of sense. You have a company here that is making profit that if the NRA were in charge of and they were running as efficiently and to the standard that Bisley Shooting Ground is, are going to see larger returns. Now, whilst that would be larger returns for the National Shooting Centre Limited, any profits generated from that company actually go into the NRA, so it helps the NRA. So yes, more income for the NRA would be better. It's going to be reinvested, hopefully, into Bisley. It would be reinvested into, into the sport far and wide. So yeah, I can understand why they want to get more money. But their simple misunderstanding of the figures that have been thrown around is tax figure of £50,000. And with corporation tax being 20%, well, that means that Busy Shooting Ground must be making £250,000. And they're drawing from this figure that if they were to suddenly run Busy Shooting Ground, that the NRA would suddenly be making £250,000 a year. So yes, that's considerably more than the £70,000 that they're currently getting in rent. So an extra £180,000 in your pocket, thank you very much. But they quite clearly don't understand how corporation tax works. The most simple deduction here is the fact that Bisley Shooting Ground Limited is two sites. They have two independent sites, one at Bisley and one up in Scotland. And this tax figure was for both. It's for the entire organisation. So it's almost like saying that, well, the fairer McDonald's makes, what, £10 billion a year. Well, no, McDonald's with its thousands of stores internationally makes £10 billion a year. You can't just base it on one site. And that's a bit of a silly example, but that's pretty much what the NRA are doing. From that figure, you don't know if the, the Scottish site is making £200,000 a year and the Bisley site is making fifty, pounds or it could be that the Scottish site is making £249,000 a year and the Bisley site is making £1,000 a year. If this is what they are basing their figures on, the NRA members should be incredibly worried. What if all of the current customers of Bisley Shooting Ground in disgust decide that they're not going to use Bisley Shooting Ground because it's now run by the NRA and they lose all of their customers? They've outlaid hundreds of thousands of pounds, they've got salaries to pay and other maintenance costs 
they've lost their £70,000 income, and then it's very much reminiscent of what happened 21 years ago when they effectively ran it into the ground. I really don't think the NRA can be trusted to run that playground. They're certainly not being transparent and upfront with their side of the story. They're certainly either, again, knowingly or unknowingly misleading the members and not being transparent in it. And it just asks more questions. And then what really got to me at the AGM was that the trustees weren't on the stage, the trustees weren't facing the members, they were actually very much blending in with the members. They were sat down there, I saw a number of them sort of keeping their heads low until they thought it appropriate to heckle Alexander Rupel. How unprofessional can you get shouting and jeering at somebody? Instead of going up there and having a conversation with them as a trustee, you decide to heckle them. That's unfortunately who is currently running and leading the NRA. And whilst again, I would absolutely welcome the NRA to give their side of the story. We went and sat up with uh, Alexander Rupel with Government TV and we've interviewed him to get his side of the story. That is currently on pause because it needs to go through his legal team to make sure that everything's good to release. And we would quite happily do that either through English Shooting or Government TV for the NRA. I won't hold my breath. They just seem to not be taking anything under advisement either from the Charity Commission or their members. The members were certainly very unhappy through many different aspects raised at the AGM. And when you put it all together, it still begs the question of is the NRA fit for purpose? Are the trustees and the current management and leadership fit for purpose? There we go guys, thank you very much for watching this video, I hope you've enjoyed it, and as always, I hope to see you soon.